In session 9 of the Essential Skills course, you learned that ASP.NET has its own security system that works well and is easy to implement. In this lesson, you are going to use an HTTP module to create your own custom security system that works entirely outside the built-in system, although it still uses ASP.NET to manage user login. There are two reasons to implement a custom security system. Firstly, the built-in security system only manages security by folder. Often there is a requirement to implement security at page level, or even for specific items on pages. Secondly, you may need your users to be able to manage their own security permissions. The built-in security system uses the ASP.NET configuration utility, meaning that you will need to access the server itself to manage them. Using a custom security module, you can create elegant admin pages that enable your remote users to manage security permissions from within your applications. To begin this lesson, open the sec file project from your sample files folder. and open securitymodule.cs if it isn't open already. In this lesson, you will implement custom security to apply more sophisticated security than is available with ASP.NET's built-in security system. First, you're going to add some code to the custom security method to retrieve information about the file that the user has requested. Add the following code to the end of the custom security method. String file path equals current application dot request dot app relative current execution file path. String file name equals system dot io dot path dot get file name file path string file extension equals system dot io dot path dot get extension file name this code retrieves information about the file that was requested by the user the file name and extension will be needed to filter out file types that you don't want to be secured. You only want your security module to apply to ASPX pages. This is necessary because HTTP modules intercept requests for all file types, including CSS files and images. In a real-world project, it would be better to create a list of safe file types instead of only securing ASPX files. Add the following if statement on the next line. If file extension equals equals dot ASPX and file name does not equal default dot ASPX and file name does not equal user admin .aspx. This if statement will only execute if the requested file is an ASPX page and is not default.aspx or useradmin.aspx. In a real-world system, the user would only be given access to the default.aspx page. You are allowing access to the useradmin.aspx page only so that you can add yourself to the list of secure users. Now add the following code inside the if statement to check whether the user is authorized. String username equals current application dot user dot identity dot name if not utilities dot check access Username, 
current application dot server dot transfer tilde forward slash access denied dot ASPX. This code retrieves the username from the current application object and checks whether the user is authorized by using the check access method from the project's utilities.cs class. Note that the utilities.cs class is a part of this project and not part of the .NET framework. You can find utilities.cs in the Solution Explorer. If the check access method returns false, the user will be redirected to access denied .aspx. The check access method that is used in this lesson checks to see whether the logged in user has a record in the secure users table that I have created in the sec file database. If a record exists, the user is allowed access to all pages. If a record does not exist, the user may only access default.aspx and useradmin.aspx. Before your HTTP module will do anything, you must apply it to the project by editing the web.config file. Open web.config and add the following code just after the ending config sections tag. System dot web server modules add name equals security module type equals sec file dot security module. You may have noticed the comments that are automatically included in an HTTP module. These state that the HTTP module must be registered with IIS. In fact, by referencing your HTTP module in the web.config file, you are doing everything necessary to register the HTTP module. You do not need to do anything else to apply an HTTP module to a project. Test your security module now by viewing default.aspx in your web browser. If you are prompted to log in, log in with your Windows username and password. The default.aspx page is displayed without any problems. Now click the Files button on the navigation bar. Notice that the text on the page has changed. Your username is not on the list of approved users, so the HTTP module redirects you to accessdenied.aspx. Make a note of the username that's displayed, as you're now going to add it to the list of approved users. Click the Admin button on the navigation bar, Enter the username that you noted earlier and click Add User. Now click the Files button once again and you are now able to access the page. Close your web browser now and close Visual Studio. You've now completed Lesson 8-9, Implement Custom Security with an HTTP module.